This one's going to be fun. I think that this one is going to be fun because we're going to talk about a few different things. And I know a lot of folks have been wondering what it is exactly that we've been up to at one screen. So I'm going to show you if you stick around to the end, I'm actually going to segue the episode into a conversation about some of the really exciting product that we've launched. We're going to talk today about the Apple DSP. I know it feels like another day, another DSP. That's the theme of today's episode is another day, another DSP. Apple's walled garden growing continually higher. So we'll talk about what that means. What are the implications? How can we adapt as marketers? How can we get around these walled gardens? What are the things that we can start to adapt some of our, our own best practices to? So we're going to dive into that one. But again, if you stick around to the end, I'll show you some product. So it's a good incentive to stick around. Another day, another DSP, Apple's walled garden growing higher as the battle that once was Facebook versus Google becomes Amazon versus Apple in the battle of online advertising. And how do the recent product launches at one screen help brands and media sellers alike to overcome the cookie list future with zip code level audience targeting for all, all this and more on today's tear sheet. Apple catching an unexpected wave in the news cycle last week when a job posting for a senior manager for a DSP in its ads platform business was found and shared amongst the advertising community. Looking to the posting itself for clues about Apple's intent, the ideal candidate would have experienced building a mobile centric DSP and know how and, and know how when it comes to optimizing mobile campaigns using measurement and attribution. A DSP is a statement of intent for any ads business, let alone one like Apple, which has grown exponentially on the back of its decision to make it harder for companies to grow their own within its ecosystem, also known as a walled garden, and something that is becoming increasingly more common and adds to the challenge of being a marketer and creating integrated ad campaigns. The automation of the DSP process is, is important because it means marketers can set up campaigns and manage them with relative ease, in turn, likely spending more money. It remains unclear if the intended DSP is geared towards serving ads solely on Apple's own and operated properties, such as the App Store itself, or on the millions of iOS apps, or even on third-party properties such as the mobile web. Apple would not confirm its plans to build a DSP or provide additional context as to how this would fit into the overall company's strategy for its ad business. But the job posting is a clear signal of intent for the business that has left the impression that building ad tech is the last thing it wanted to do. This is a company, after all, with a business model geared toward kneecapping advertising rather than embracing it. Times change, however. For some time, it's been clear that the idea of Apple being opposed to online advertising might need revising. A DSP settles it. No company builds ad tech like this unless they're serious about making a bigger move on media dollars. It costs too much time and money to do it on a whim. Over the years, Apple has built a vast walled garden of connected products on Apple services, said Paulina Clemenko, chief growth officer at Pubmatic. What connects all these products and services creating seamless consumer experiences is user data. Apple building their own DSP is the next logical step in the evolution. They have been building their advertising business behind the scenes, leveraging their scale and ecosystem assets. So after a decade of Facebook versus Google, it's clear that Amazon versus Apple will likely be the title card of the next big battle for digital marketing dollars. But what does that mean for marketers? Well, for the wise marketer who wants to confidently invest their advertising dollars, learning how to navigate the cookie list future is imperative. With less personally identifiable data, marketers will need to rely more on context to reach their target audience. Moreover, using one of the most powerful forms of context, location, is becoming almost impossible on mobile devices without first-party location data. I realize I switched between data and data. <laughs> but location targeting remains possible with out-of-home media like billboards, transit shelters, and buses. Out-of-home advertising ensures ads run exactly when and where they are most relevant on both digital and static. And when merged with aggregated anonymized audience data, out-of-home location-specific ads provide a powerful way to reach audiences. By doing this, marketers can effectively address both upper and lower funnel marketing use cases by using location as context. Upper funnel use case, use location as a proxy for audience. 
In an increasingly cookie-less world, it would become harder to find specific audiences online. Contacts will reemerge as the best way to find people. Traditionally, contacts has been driven by content. News might reach an educated demo, while a cookie magazine could reach a foodie. Location is another powerful form of context. Demographically similar and like-minded people have a tendency to cluster by location. Claritas was one of the earliest to take advantage of this trend through geo-targeted prism clusters. If you're buying TV and radio, you're already familiar with Claritas, and you'll definitely want to stay tuned until the end, because when you see what we've got for you at one screen, it's going to change the way you think about all of your media buys. But for out of home, Claritas has been incorporated into the Geopath currency for a few years already and leverages non-personally identifiable census data and device data to build excellent audience profiles of specific zip codes. Marketers in turn can reach the markets that over-index in their desired audiences. Need parents? Target ads in kid-friendly neighborhoods. Looking for retirees? Put ads near senior centers. Want Spanish speakers? Play Spanish language ads in neighborhoods with large Spanish-speaking populations. Day parting can further power contexts. For instance, an alcohol brand wanting to reach bar hoppers can advertise in a nightlife district at 10 p.m. A sports betting brand looking to reach sports fans can advertise near the stadium before and after the game. Lower funnel, get as close to the transaction as possible. In the online world, Amazon ads and Google search generate huge dollars because they are close to the transaction. Nothing is better for, for an insurance broker to generate leads when they can advertise directly to people looking for insurance. Out of home, location-based ads can do for the offline world what Amazon and Google do in the online world by stepping in front of the transaction to influence behavior. Marketers can put ads near the point of purchase, outside retail stores, near tourist attractions, close to restaurants, locations, and around uh, movie theaters. Further, they can conquest their competition by advertising near competitor locations. We call that being close to the point of purchase during the moment of consideration. You can use smaller formats like kiosks, urban panels, bus shelters, uh, things that are particularly appealing and let marketers get close to the point of purchase. It's worth noting here that Amazon and Google are two of the biggest spenders on out-of-home advertising. Also in that company are Facebook and Apple, which is really the buried lead here. The top online ad revenue generating companies are also some of the top spenders on out-of-home advertising. And the reason for that is simple, offline attention arbitrage. It is less expensive to build top of funnel awareness, aka interest offline than it is using digital ads and interest becomes intent and intent becomes sales. Along the way, Google paid search ads uh, are served to capture that intent. And you can start to see how it is that these online platforms invest so heavily in offline channels to drive that online traffic. So then how do you quickly, one, identify who your audience is, is two, identify them in the real world, find them in the real world, and then three, on a market level, be able to make decisions about where to best invest your dollars. So that's what I wanted to show you today, taking you all the way to the end here. I'm going to share my screen. So if you're listening to this, I'm going to link in the uh, in the show notes definitely to the YouTube so that you can jump over and check that out. Uh, this is, I think, going to be the first time that I do a, a live screen share. And if this all goes great here, it looks like that should be working. I'm just going to toggle back to make sure that – thanks for being flexible here. It looks like it's all working here. This is Persona Builder. If you're seeing this and you want to get access to this, like literally you can just email me. It's Tim at one screen dot AI. This is as far as we know, the first of its kind, it's completely free to you. This is persona builder. It's built on top of those Claritas prism profiles. So if you're already buying TV or radio and you're familiar with Claritas, you're going to love this. This could help you too. This is going to help you to advise brands on what markets they should be buying from you why they should be buying those mar markets more specifically if you're doing things like direct mail, any of your digital online tactics, your paid search, display campaigns. The implications for this are pretty awesome. But the idea here is very similar to if you've ever run Facebook ads, uh, this will be pretty native. You just come in and you start to select some criteria that describes your audience. And you'll see at the top here that the number of personas is changing. We'll just select a couple of uh, 
income levels here, mid-scale through upscale incomes. We'll say we're looking for college grads who are, we'll say mostly homeowners with an above average tech usage. It looks like there's four personas there. So let's just take that down. We'll say just homeowners. So we're looking for a mid to upscale audience, college educated, above average tech usage who are homeowners. There's one persona, a little bit over four, we'll call it four and a quarter million people, a uh, hair under four and a quarter million people. But there it's matched you to the Claritas Prism profile that it is best suited based on those answers. What's really cool is the next part where then we look at on a national level, on a by county basis, which counties have the highest number of those people, which counties have the highest percentage of those people. So you might say, I want to reach the most number of those people. Well, it's Harris County uh, right there, 102,126 targets that match that prison profile in that county. So that could be your TV spend, your direct mail spend, your out of home spend, uh, any of your offline media spend, this is a great way to quickly identify the markets that you should be looking at. Um, another thing that you can do here is you could start to layer in some filters. So maybe you said, hey, I want to target counties that have at least at least 20,000 of the target that I'm looking to reach. And then I want to have at least an on-target percentage of... 5% in that county or more. Well, if you do all of that, you'll drill down to a pretty clear picture here. There's five counties best suited for you to reach that audience. We think that Persona Builder is going to be one of the keys for brands, for marketers who are looking to bypass those walled gardens to take advantage of some great location data, and especially for brands that are already using this in their TV and their radio buys, being able to apply that same methodology to other formats that you might be considering, uh, we think is pretty exciting. So that's your daily tear sheet, another day, another DSP, but Hey, it's not without fear. If you want to get access to those tools, just email me, Tim at one screen.ai. I'll get you set up. It's completely free to use, get in there, play around. If you're a media buyer, it's going to help you to understand different markets that maybe you haven't previously considered, expose some of those misunderstood and undervalued opportunities that we know are really important. And then on the other side, if you are a media seller and you help brands to deploy advertising, uh, this is going to be a great tool for you to be able to uh, very at a high level in a modern way, be able to, to lead a conversation about finding that audience with a high degree of confidence and being able to deploy that advertising investment confidently and as with, with as little waste as possible. So that is your daily tear sheet. Remember that share of voice equals share of mind, share of mind equals share of market. So when you've got something to say, make it count. We'll see y'all next time.